The symptoms of bullying include physical abuse, taunting, teasing, and exclusion of the victim from groups and pastimes. Incidents of bullying can leave all students, special education and typical learners, traumatized and scarred for many years. Teachers are the school's first line of defense against these behaviors. Teachers and administrators, actually all, all adults, whether it's social workers or psychologists and so on, uh, ought to be quite aware that a child's social situation, their perceptions of safety, their perceptions of how they're treated and whether they're included, impacts significantly on whether they can access their academic program or plan of action. And so an awareness level that this is highly important and it impacts whether a child can access his or her learning and, and just being aware that any kind of mean-spirited, hurtful behaviors that that child is experiencing needs to be treated in much the same way as you would making sure that that child has access to liter uh, literature, language, art supports, numeracy, and so on. It's no different. Well, you know, teachers are on the front lines working with kids in the school all day long. So they have an opportunity to see things that perhaps an administrator might not see or so readily see. So I think there's lots of things that teachers can do to bring bullying into the IEP. If a teacher knows that a student they're working with has an individualized education plan and they see the, the vulnerabilities that this child might have in being able to A, recognize when they're being bullied or even know what to do once they are being bullied, they can bring that to the attention of the IEP team and say, I'm noticing that Johnny or Susie isn't doing a very good job at this, and it's actually affecting them in a negative way. So we need to address that through building up their social skills or their ability to recognize even when bullying is happening. Interesting that in research study after research study, three out of four instances of bullying are not recognized and ignored by educators. Now, I firmly believe I have yet to meet a teacher, a principal, a social worker, psychologist, special educator who doesn't care deeply about the safety and well-being of all of their children. So it's not about not caring. It's about not knowing what to look for. And when there is a wide continuum of low-level kinds of behaviors that are mean, but since it's not bullying yet, we don't need to intervene with it. So when adults change the conversation and do not use the B words, bullying, bullier, bullying behaviors, and so on, and change the conversation to mean, hurtful, unkind, Again, anything but bullying, kids get it. They know they've been hurtful. They were doing something that was mean. They'll own it, but not bullying. The advice that I'd give to a teacher when they become aware of a bullying situation is to not let and let that sit and fester. You want to get on it as soon as you possibly can. You want to bring it to the attention to, of the team. And obviously, before you're, you're going to the parents, you, you want to discuss that with the other teachers, the other people on the team, so that at least from a school perspective, everybody's aware of what's going on. Um, often, just being aware of it is enough to help resolve the issue. One of the main things that uh, I see all too often is uh, a child with special needs who may be, for example, on the autism spectrum, may have processing, uh, difficulties may um, be a little bit explosive or impulsive and so on. Um, these children very often are targets because they're different of uh, hurtful, mean-spirited behavior. But unfortunately, all too often, the adults in the, this child's world may tell the child to ignore the hurtful behavior, sit somewhere else, um, uh, just pretend it's not happening. And unfortunately, those kinds of responses or interventions from adults 
are so unsuccessful that they actually exacerbate the problems because a child may try to ignore it, try to sit somewhere else, and the behaviors will escalate. And the child will take it and take it and take it until finally they snap and lash out, whether it's verbally or physically, and that's when adults notice, and that's when they intervene and attempt to get that child with the special needs to change the very behaviors that got them there in the beginning. And it's a vicious circle, and adults need to be aware that asking uh, the intervention or, or suggesting the intervention be, um, oh, pretend it's not happening, don't worry about it, it'll go away, is, is uh, really detrimental to a child's being able to um, increase their own social skills to be able to manage things. If a teacher is concerned that a student's being bullied um, on the basis of their disability, then in addition to whatever policies and procedures are in place based on that school district's anti-bullying mandate or policy, following that chain of command, they should also bring it up at the IEP meeting. And they should feel free to do that and raise it just as a parent would as how can we as a team address this child's unique needs and how this child's unique needs can be met in a way that perhaps makes them less vulnerable to these kinds of situations. The advice that I'd give to a teacher um, when a parent approaches them and says, I suspect my child is being bullied or I know my child is being bullied. I think the best way for a teacher to handle this is to um, let that parent know that you're going to take any and all measures that you can within reason to investigate that situation. And I certainly don't want to make more work for schools and for teachers because we know they have their hands full. But what really needs to happen when a parent suspects that a child is being bullied, the school team needs to come together and look at that child on, in how he is functioning throughout the school day. If an educator becomes aware of a bullying situation, they should notify the parents right away of the student, and they should notify the parents of the student who is perpetrating the bullying. It, you, most policies explicitly state that, and it certainly would be good practice in my view. And then I would say that you should probably bring it up at the IEP team if the student has an IEP as well, or convene an IEP team if it's if it's significant. If it's you know one incident, then a judgment call has to be made. I'm not suggesting that that an IEP team has to be called for every single incident where. A student might be teased or bullied in, in school, but I think we all realize that there are points where it goes beyond that incident, it becomes a pervasive hostile environment for the child. And when that's occurring, then all of the adults in the child's life should be made aware of it, while also respecting the fact, and, and I have to tell parents this a lot, that, and, and this is something that educators need to understand when they talk to parents, is that parents aren't necessarily entitled to know the repercussions to another student of the discipline. And many parents want to know that. They'll say, I want to know what happened to the other kid. Is he being expelled? Is he being suspended? You're not entitled to that information. That other student has rights to privacy in his educational decision making and records. And so parents need to understand that. And, and I would say to educators, making parents aware of the fact that the school district has obligations to the other child and the other family, instead of just saying, I can't tell you that, is going to foster a better cooperative relationship with the family. Schools need to focus on what it will take to create a safe experience for every child. And very often, uh, dealing with a child is really dealing with a family, dealing with a parent, and not so much the behavior of the child. And so the interventions that might be recommended are highly contextual. There is not a menu or a set of interventions that are going to work in each and every case. One of the global things is to make sure that there are clear and um, well-established and agreed upon methods of communication, uh, how the home will communicate with school, how the child will safely let the school personnel know that something has happened. Uh, I find another trend is that something that may have been quite insignificant and maybe not noticed at the school level, somehow between school dismissal and when the child arrives at home 20 minutes later, it's turned into an all-out assault. 
And so what was not communicated or not observed during school hours is now coming back to the school through a, a very unhappy, irate, out of control parent uh, when it just puts the, the school on the defensive. Including bullying in the IEP. Bullying can be included in an IEP, um, in my opinion, um, very easily and very effectively. I think it needs to say somewhere on the record that the child is more vulnerable socially, um, that it can also be under the parent input and concerns on the record that this is a concern of the parents, that they are concerned that their child is being bullied. Then the other area that it needs to be addressed in the IEP is, is as an actual individualized education plan goal and objective. Susie will learn how to recognize when somebody is isolating them. Susie will learn to recognize when somebody is ignoring them. Um, because many kids who have disabilities don't even recognize when they might be being bullied. So there's the recognizing of it. And then another aspect might be Susie will learn how to advocate for herself when she is being isolated by the group, whether that means she's able to say something to the, to the kids who are doing it or maybe go to an adult or a teacher to get help. All depends on the child and what that child's individual needs are. But it absolutely, bullying can absolutely be addressed um, with an IEP goal that addresses the specific social skill deficits. I think it's hard to stop bullying. I think what we can do through an IEP is to provide goals and objectives, provide um, time with um, professionals in the school setting that will um, help our students and their skills grow in order to prevent or decrease the likelihood of them being a victim of, of, of bullying. You know, for, for example, a lot of the students I, I tend to work with and I tend to consult with, um, they have a really hard time on picking up on some of those social rules, those hidden rules, right? They have a hard time understanding that what a friend really is. You know, a lot of my middle school and high school guys are really, they want a friend. They want to be part of a group. They want to be accepted. What they sometimes don't pick up on is those subtleties, that language, the sarcasm, the idioms. And if we, through an IEP, are able to provide them with goals and objectives that focus on strategies on how to pick those things up, they're gonna, their toolbox, their social toolbox, is going to grow. I've seen it work really well when it is broken down into the simplest of social pragmatic elements, where you have to break it down to those skills that a child does not have socially. And so you isolate those skill deficits and develop very specific IEP goals. I think the other important thing to address through the IEP is also the, the mental health piece of it. And look at coping strategies. Look at emotional regulation strategies. Um, because, and I say that because in my experience, a lot of our guys that do want friends and that are looking for friends, as soon as you start to talk about, well, are these guys really friends? How are we defining them as friends? Uh, they get very aggravated. And they close you off. And if they're closed off to hearing advice or hearing things about how they could better their relationships, you know, that in itself is, is difficult. That's a roadblock. You know, so I think, I think two things. I think we can absolutely address things through the IEP by using goals and objectives that target um, social development and relationship development, uh, that target flexibility, uh, that target emotional regulation. And again, all with the idea of building our guys' toolbox, our social toolbox, um, so that they wait, when they go into social situations, they're more aware of what, what might be happening.